of course, we're all going to be censored, and uh, I might as well just shut the show down because apparently the U.S. government has a secret plot to silence my voice, according to Redacted with Natalie Morris. Let's jump right into this one because I know I'm not going to be able to watch the whole thing. I don't have time. So let's see what the fuck they're talking about. Let me guess. Um, um, misinformation and disinformation from overseas sources where if you bounce your website through uh, Russia, you're going to have a hard time. No, I don't know what it is. Global Engagement Center is going to, I don't know, I'm very afraid. I'm just, I'm Jade Helming right now. Well, the U.S. wants to censor your plain old opinions and make sure that it's not foreign misinformation. This is a new initiative from the U.S. State Department, and they said they will lead a coalition to counter disinformation. Okay, well then, I guess if you're not full of shit or you're not actively misinforming people, that would be the dis information part of it you got nothing to worry about i got nothing to worry about are you worried why are you worried suddenly you're worried it's weird it's almost as if you and your husband fled the country for legal reasons with canada and the uk through the global engagement center yes the the worst dictatorships on the fucking planet the canada and the uk i'm i'm uh, if anybody shuts down people's rights it's it's those places i'm gonna call them the gec for the rest of this segment now take a look at this uh here's a recent statement from the state department saying oh so they're telling you what they're gonna do it's so brazen the uk and canada we're gonna be working together on this foreign manipulation stuff okay and if you're not one of the manipulators i why would you have anything to worry about are 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 you gonna go to this uh, I'm worried we'll be caught up in this because we're not uh, disinforming people, but we're worried that they will label us as such because we share opinions with uh, the Wagner group by accident. Disinformation, it's a problem. Now, you would think that after the Twitter files, when the- <laughs> You mean after we stopped laughing at the Twitter files? The GEC was ousted as a propagator of- Ousted as a propagator? You mean- outed as a never mind misinformation they made stuff up in order no they didn't to deplatform people no they didn't uh they made up narratives about nobody was deplatformed nobody the government didn't deplatform anybody if if twitter disagreed they kept people on happened all the time yeah again <sighs> these people have a lot to learn about consent about iran russia and china but still, Twitter, uh, um, uh, I'm sorry, Canada and the UK are like, yeah, we'll let you lead this one. You did a good job on those things, I guess. Uh, now, the Go Global Inf Engagement Center is the same organization that created misinformation about Russia and China and COVID and tried to, like to deplatform normal people. They, did they, they try to deplatform normal people for what? That went against the government narrative. Uh, Which was what? That vaccines work and that... Hey, I'm just asking questions. Um, with that in mind, here is a story from The Guardian today saying U.S. to lead global alliance to counter government disinformation. Mm, no. Uh, foreign government disinformation. Would, wouldn't you? I, oh, well, maybe, you know what? Uh, I guess uh, maybe they're fighting their own disinformation. Congratulations, you've won. And here is what they say must be done from this special envoy, James Rubin. He says the GEC hopes to agree on definitions for information manipulation versus plain old opinions that other governments are entitled to have, even if we disagree with them. Right. Yeah, that would be, I'll tell you, let me give you an example. Uh, America sucks. That would be the opinion of Vladimir Putin and the Kremlin and everybody there, except the ones who hide their money here or send their kids here to live, in which case it's America sucks, wink, like with an asterisk. Um, the, the, you know, the, the opinion in general that would be held by them. The other part would be uh, planning a news story in an Indian newspaper that the CIA created AIDS to kill black people. And then using your foreign spies to release those stories and promote those stories throughout Africa, for example. That would be the, uh, uh, does that, that clarify the distinction? Okay. And they're gonna join forces with the UK and Canada, and they're hoping to snag a couple other partners. Now, do you want the government to define things like this? Right. 
Yes, they do it all the time. Uh, do, here's, here's a good one. Asshole, have you ever looked at the back of a box of food for its calorie count, for how much vitamin B it has, for any warnings, whether it has monosodium glutamate? You do it all the fucking time. What do you want? Next, you'll, the government will tell us when to stop and when to go at intersections. Get the fuck out of here. Yes, these are standards we set. Right? What is a plain old opinion and what is a definition that's acceptable? Right there, my, my spidey sense goes off. Right. What, what's a definition that's acceptable? Are, are we having a bungholio moment, young lady? Are we, are we confused about what? Because you just showed us. Well, I'm not going to go back and do it. Well, yes, I am. All right, here we go. Definitions for information manipulation versus plain old opinions that other governments are entitled to have, even if we disagree with them. Not definitions of stuff, not definitions of what things are, but definitions for what entitled what or what encapsulates or or uh, you know is technically information manipulation versus just dumb old shit. Like this, right? What is a plain old opinion? And what is a definition that's acceptable? Right there, my... Yeah, not a definition that's acceptable. How do you define information manipulation versus an opinion? It's, an, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sentence that grown-ups would use when talking about something serious that uh, while you're cosplaying a librarian, you're having issues with. My spidey sense goes off, right? You don't have a spidey sense, uh, young lady. I'm sorry. You, I, you and your network... And the thing that you're on have shit on Madam Web. I don't want to hear anything about your opinions about Spidey. Right. Now, last year, we had two rounds of the Twitter files that pointed. Yes, equally stupid. At the GEC as the baddies. Right. That doesn't mean they are. As a matter of fact, I would say, as my mother would say when I was growing up, consider the source. These are assholes telling me this. Therefore, it might be shit. They're the bad guys. They don't know how to root out disinformation. <laughs> they weren't even trying. They were just letting Twitter know in these cases that there was misinformation and disinformation specifically like the, the active form and the passive form and letting them know about this. And then they did it themselves. The rooting was done indeed by the social media platforms because they're trying to sell advertising and they'd rather not have, you know, stormfront telling truths about race they label things they don't like as disinformation just don't like that's the standard they don't like it they don't like that i don't like that it's too salty i don't like that that was this that was what the state department did that's what you think the gec did i don't like that stop that stop doing that I don't want to like that that's pretty clear, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. Here was one from the first one um, from the Twitter files number 17. This came in March. Uh, in this document dump, we saw that the Atlantic Council's Digital Forensic Research Lab was funded by the GEC, and they wrote mm -hmm. to Twitter with a list of people that they suspected were engaging in inauthentic behavior. Okay. Yeah, bots. <laughs> or or um, like fake BLM accounts for example, or maybe even uh, you dressing like a librarian at, who uh, apparently is wearing um, floral camo. It was inauthentic because they didn't like it. So No, it was inauthentic because it wasn't real. It was not authentic. They, these were not the authentic opinions of a person expressing themselves and certainly not a fucking American. These were uh, ghost accounts and bots. D do we actually, or do we give a fuck about an actual telling of this? Right. They said, if this person says anything pro whatever. Yeah, that's what they, that was their standard. Whatever. I don't like that. What kind of fucking mean girls do they think run the State Department? I don't like that. Whatever. Shaw. They Hashtag Shaw. If we could figure out how to spell must it. Must be state funded from somebody else. Sp it must be state funded with somebody else. Specifically, they were looking for Hindu nationalism more broadly. Don't you dare think nationalistically. If you're a Hindu, you must be a state actor. What? 
so uh, huh so the so the gec was concerned so part of the twitter files was an attack on hindu nationalists you mean the the ones that want to kill pakistanis or that are calling for the death of or or actually i got news for you aren't actually and if you'll listen to what was actually said aren't actually not actually not really hindu nationalists hindu nationalists can hindu national all they want to but these people were fake hindu nationalists basically kind of trying to cause trouble between two nuclear powers on social media starting like basically civil unrest and they don't really care that's the difference uh and only so many on this list had anything to do with it many were just ordinary americans with no connection to india or <laughs> or no clue about indian politics uh-huh you it might you mean the list that entails a bunch of shit and uh, you made the whole list about one thing when the list whole list was about a bunch of things and part of the list was about this thing so oh fucking hell they just took the liberty to make a spreadsheet of twitter users they wanted twitter to depopulate they also have depopulate i see all right so uh we're just gonna kill these people we're just we're liquidating this. they just want to depopulate twitter's hindu nationalists tw hindu nationalist twitter if that's a thing depopulate all right i i feel like i'm is it just me or does it seem like they're trying to trigger roseanne had uh, four, hundreds of Chinese, suspected Chinese accounts that they thought were foreign information. Many with were connected to Iran that weren't. Now, Taibi at the time said this about the... Uh-huh. Many that were connected to... Uh, they said were connected to Iran that weren't. Yeah, some of the ones that they were saying, these might be connected to Iran. They might also just be Russian trying to pose as Iranians as well. So they're not connected to Iran because they're pretending to be connected to Iran. And that's part of the trouble. Do you see the disinformation part of this, you fucking tool? GEC. He says they usually list themselves as a State Department entity, but they're not. They were created by Obama's last year, and the GEC is an interagency group within the State Department whose initial... Oh, oh yeah, huge. Yeah, that's. I, I think that's key. Because they say they're part of the State Department, but they're actually just part of the State Department. Official partners include... And they... And the, let me get this straight. The State Department interacts with other governmental agencies and NGOs to deal with uh, foreign influence on the United States as well as a myriad of other things. Is that, am, I, am I in the ballpark? crazy lady who fled the country with her husband after he had been a fox host because you defrauded people out of their life savings with the fbi the dhs the nsa the cia darpa derpa of course they do it's the fucking state department the state department talks to everybody fuck off Spe special operations command and others so yeah that's the part that scares me and others why won't she tell us what is she hiding this is not just the state department so do not be fooled never mind this is all government agencies yeah everything fucking the agriculture department Boom! Gotcha. And it's not just foreign. It's who is saying things that is against our narrative that we can label foreign, right? No, it's not. No, they, they, here's the thing. Uh, the government does not have access to Twitter's servers, for example. And they could go, hey, this fits a bunch of other things. We've been monitoring what real foreign disinformation campaigns that we have human intel on from overseas. And with this, these things kind of align with that. We did a scan of stuff and these things are coming up. Can you check these out? And if they are indeed fake accounts, could you please get rid of them? If they're regular Americans or whatever, uh, you know, if you think they're, you know, cosplaying as Hindu nationalists, that's up to you. But we just thought we'd let you know. That's what this means. That's what, to, to grown people, that's what this means.
Now, to people who are living uh, as expats in the, from the United States for fear of uh, legal reprisal or to avoid civil penalties, it who who's apparently lifestyle is paid for by fuck knows who, uh, this might make you nervous. Because if they shut down that gravy train, you know, your turkey's going to be a little dry. Then the GEC sent these reports to the media. So they had this long list of users that they said, we think these are probably bad guys. They sent the list to the media. And then in the Twitter files, we see the media following up with Twitter and saying, you're going to deplatform these people, right? We have the list. These people are still active. What are you going to do? So the media then doing the bidding of this government agency. <clears throat> so did they, um, did they, you do realize that these are fake accounts. You do realize that the vast majority, there may be a couple of randos, but these are largely propaganda accounts. That's the fucking point. They send them to the media. The media, by the way, I don't know who the fucking media is. Do they, is there a, it, do they just go, like, write it take a brown envelope, write care of media and throw it in the fucking, I don't know, whatever. Anyways, do they, how does it arrive at the media? Um, and then once the media gets it, they just rubber stamp it and go, hey, Twitter, what the fuck? Now, Taibi said that the GEC passed some good information to Twitter. Yeah, did they? Some? You seem confused by that. Some? But mostly not. They but mostly not? They used this report here called Russian Pillars of Disinformation and Propaganda, full of spurious associations, such as the fact that anyone who tweets anything critical of the U.S. or slightly in favor of a narrative that could be favorable to Russia, China, or Iran is a foreign agent. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not at all what it says. I don't have a copy of it right in front of me, <laughs> but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that just the whiff of it makes you a foreign agent. I, I'm, I, I, you know, I'm, I feel comfortable just kind of laying that one out there. I feel free to prove me wrong by bring, put, you know what? Crazy me. Why don't you just put the, the, the line that says anybody, anybody, that's kind of even a remotely distinct and I don't like that. And then I don't like that. Um, Put that uh, that line up on screen. You could you can do that, right? You just showed the gr the cover. You showed the cover of it, right? You ca you're capable of putting graphics on the screen. Why not? And I know this is nuts. Put the part up where it says anybody that even is the whiff of the whiff of doesn't like it and even sides with remotely a narrative that might be associated with Iran is yeah. That should be deplatformed. Um, Taibi concludes that disinformation studies have mostly become a con where non-experts mesmerize reporters with what one former GEC staffer calls hairball charts. Take a look at this one. Hair. Hairball charts. So here is what he's saying. Dis okay, Dis number 42. Di disinformation studies has mostly become a con where non-experts mesmerize reporters with what one former GEC staffer calls hairball charts. Oh, hairball charts. That He's calling them that not because it's a hair brain scheme. Hairball charts are because of, like, these look like hair knots, and they spread out from there. Okay, usually measuring something idiotic like who follows two Chinese diplomats or shares an Iranian free Palestine meme. Is that what it does? Okay, first of all, the disinformation studies are not about uh, everybody that's attached to that piece of information being a willing participation uh, participant. Otherwise, it wouldn't fucking work. You would only be disinforming people who already know it's disinformation, who don't need to be convinced because they already know the lie. Disinformation, the whole goal is to lead to misinformation. And misinforming people involves this, this spread out. So it starts with a disinformation campaign, and then it spreads to misinformations, where dumbasses like her and her fucking redacted dipshit husband and any number of like Roseanne-esque people on Twitter just go, oh my God, that sounds true, flick. And they just bump it downstream on their feed. That, this whole thing, usually measuring something idiotic, like someone who follows two Chinese dip diplomats or shares an Iranian free Palestine. No, it doesn't. That's not what this chart shows. Here's what is idiotic. The person who looks at this chart and and with 
total Matt Taibbi face goes, oh, 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 I don't get it. I don't get it. And that's what he's talking about. He's looking at that chart and going, that looks complicated. Like a fucking, it, 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 like if, if it's too complex, it must be fake. It must be a lie. That's it. Jesus Christ. You know, basically it's just gobbledygook. Basically. Gook speak. Yeah, basically it's just gobbledygook speak. Okay, first of all, you don't have to say speak when you say gobbledygook. Gobbledygook assumes a certain, le a certain level of speech. I don't know how many times I have to say this. It feels like it's 35 times a day, especially when I'm watching your gobbledygook. And reporters take it. And then if you look at this hairball chart, it's just saying, where do we have influence? And who are the people where we don't have influence? No, that's, that's not what this chart says at all. It, it, it takes the sites where an idea grows, one particular piece of propaganda they know specifically is a piece of propaganda, like the existence of the PLO and Yasser Arafat being a KGB construction from a long time ago, or the idea that the CIA created AIDS to kill black people in Africa, which we also know was a KGB plot to, to create disinformation. And they follow that flow from where it starts spreading across a space and how it transforms over time into a softer version where they some people will take off the parts that obviously are clues that it's misinformation or dis, a dis, part of a disinformation campaign. They put it in their own words and then forward it forward. It's the same misinformation tied, and that's where you get a graphic like this. Uh, again, I feel like Laszlo Hollyfeld, where I look at this and I'm like, finally, something I can understand. This, okay, let me, let me explain something. Um, this lady and Matt Taibbi are the kind of people that exist in the world so there has to be a line in every sci-fi movie I like where someone goes, Doc, speak English. I'm like, motherfucker, he just spoke English. That's how he would say it. That's And if you're in the room, you would understand it or you wouldn't be in the fucking room. So, all right. <clears throat> That's why. Yeah, she's an expat. And let's say that they're the bad guys. Uh-huh. How about they are? How about in the cases, take one of the cases like that is, this is an example of, by the way, that Matt Taibbi said they gave good information. Assume that for a second and know that the chart with the good information looks like that. The chart with the bad information is, a, I guess, would be a direct line from some rando on Twitter that goes nowhere. And then get the media to do our bidding by calling them the bad guys. And that, in fact, happened. In fact, it did. last year, the Washington Examiner profiled a GEC-funded NGO in the UK that listed media outlets by risk, right? And so what they did was put money into the media outlets that were not high risk. In fact, the GEC obligated almost $100 million, of which roughly $80 million came from the Pentagon. And right, okay, hang on. Um, they put money into trustworthy sources, is the argument. Are you mad because you're not trustworthy and you didn't get any of this money? Because that's what it sounds like right now. And gave it to at least 39 different news organizations whose names were redacted. Here is the report. And in audit of Global Engagement Center, federal assistance, award management and monitoring. So federal assistance. So any any media outlet that gets federal assistance. Which would not be, I guess, ABC, CBS, NBC and the like. This would be downstream smaller outlets, something like that. In that report, we see this list of good dogs, basically. These are media organizations that they think are good that mm -hmm. they then gave money to. So when you wonder, why is the media not more critical of these State Department narratives? Well, <laughs> could that be why? Yeah. Well, those, those would be, yeah, those would be, again, downstream small probably local and this is the uk too so god knows what fucking zines they're handing out money to that see that in the in england they have the bbc for example which is the british broadcasting company which is state-owned it's a state outlet it is you, you used to have a bbc license and all that shit that you had to pay to have the channel and all that kind of shit and it is a product of the public abc even though it's the american broadcasting company isn't it's a private organization just like american airlines and u.s steel it's a name it's not actually state media bbc is and also bbc awards through their system 
uh, it's, it's support. Also, I haven't seen the report, so she cites the title but doesn't put up on screen other than the redacted part. Yes, it could Wondering? be. Wondering? It could be why. I wonder. Right. Um, so all of that should prove to you. Pr what, what should prove to me? A redacted piece of screen that you say means those people are actually the bad guys and a couple of title screens? That they Oh, and sorry, two Matt Taibbi tweets. They are not a group that Canada and the UK might say, yeah, let's work with them. They're doing some good stuff. But that was only one of the Twitter files that mentioned the GEC. There was another earlier in January of 2023. Of course, wh why that w that's the outlet by which they funneled all this stuff. D did these assholes, are we onto another Jade Helm? Calling Twitter and the called Twitter and the FBI belly button. Do you remember this? Yeah, it's disgusting. Yeah, we talked about this. Um, this round showed that GEC was able to get the media to bite on its narrative. Also, why am I seeing that picture and why do I give a rat fuck? Because Matt Taibbi has posted a picture. What? Um, every picture you put up that isn't evidence of something, I'm going to assume you're hiding something that certain published COVID concerns were Russian misinformation. Also, they were Chinese, also Iranian. The, here are two headlines that just picked that up and went with it. Russia linked disinformation campaign fueling coronavirus alarm. Who was president when that came out? Anybody remember? I can't remember. It was February of 2020. It was somebody important and it was Early on in the whole thing, Russia linked in disinformation campaign fueling coronavirus alarm. U.S. says, this is from Agence France Press. Well, by golly, look at that title there. Shall we look at that? Okay. Uh, Russia linked. Linked is doing a lot of work there, I guess. Disinformation uh, campaign uh, fueling. Corona virus alarm. There you go. Uh, wrestling Disney and fueling coronavirus. Uh, this is Yahoo News. Times of Israel put it out. They're using it. So it's on Asian France Press. But uh, we'll look at. Yeah. Fe February 22nd, uh, 2020. Let's see what this says. U.S. says. And now uh, Donald Trump was president. He didn't like. The idea that uh, coronavirus was uh, moving across the country, he thought it was, it was the, no big deal and be gone by the sunshine when the sunshine came out. Thousands of Russian-linked social media accounts have launched a coordinated effort to spread alarm about the new coronavirus, disrupting global efforts to fight the pandemic, U.S. officials say. The disinformation campaign promotes unfounded conspiracy theories that the United States is behind the COVID-19 outbreak. In an apparent bid to damage the U.S. image around the world by seizing on health concerns, State Department officials tasked with combating Russian disinformation told AFP, Agence France Presse, that false personas are being used on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to advance Russian talking points in multiple languages. Russia's intent is to sow discord and undermine U.S. institutions and alliances from within, including through covert and coercive malign influence campaigns, said Philip Reeker, the acting assistant secretary of state for Europe and A Eurasia, under Donald Trump. By spreading disinformation about coronavirus, Russian malign actors are once again choosing to threaten public safety by distracting from the global health response. He said the claims that have been circulating online in recent weeks include allegations that the virus is uh, a U.S. effort to wage economic war on China. I don't know why that. Uh, obviously, we were all denied that little nugget of truth. That is that it is a biological weapon manufactured by the CIA or part of a Western-led effort to push anti-China messages. U.S. individuals, including Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates, a philanthropist who spent billions of dollars in global health programs, has been falsely accused of involvement in the virus. Russia on Saturday denied the accusations with foreign ministry spokesperson, spokeswoman Maria Zakharova. Oh, hasn't she been lovely for the last little bit? Uh, telling the TASS state news agency, this is a deliberately false story. Yes, we know that. You mean the one you planted? Of course. The disinformation campaign was identified by U.S. monitors in mid-January after Chinese officials announced a third death from the new coronavirus in Wuhan, the epicenter of the outbreak. More than 2,340 people have since died, mostly in China. The number of cases exceeds 76,000. The virus has reached more than 25 countries, with deaths in Italy, Iran, and South Korea, forcing public officials to close schools. That was all from the early part of it. Okay. Uh, 
several thousand online accounts previously identified for airing Russian-backed messages on major events such as the war in Syria, the Yellow Vest protests in France, and Chile's mass demonstrations are posting almost near-identical messages about the epidemic. According to a report prepared for the State Department's Global Engagement Center and seen by AFP, the accounts, run by humans, not bots, post at similar times in English, Spanish, Italian, German, French, and can be linked back to Russian proxies or carry similar messages to Russian-backed outlets such as RT and Sputnik, it said. Russia state media started pushing anti-Western messages about the cause of the coronavirus on January 20th, with operators on social media accounts beginning to post globally the following day, U.S. officials said. In this case... We were able to see their full disinformation ecosystem in effect, including state TV, proxy websites, and thousands of false social media personas all pushing the same themes. This is not even a fucking surprise. For fuck's sake. That happened. U.S. says, look at the date on that. Je uh, February 22nd. Russia yes. F fuck Joe Biden. Linked disinformation campaign fueling coronavirus alarm. So France 24 just went with this, right? Yes. Oh, okay. COVID alarm in February of 2020 was Russia linked. All right. They don't even read the stories. Why the fuck am I? They're clearly not reading these stories. They just are there. Somebody else posted this headline and they just grabbed it because there's no fucking way you even peruse this fucking argument, this this article, and not end up going, oh, okay, oh, or I'd be full of shit if I said that. Hmm, that didn't age well, right? Um, and yes, here it did. Was it aged very well. All of it aged like there's no fucking surprise in this at all. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Hold on, I gotta scroll my chat down. Um, because somebody posted in there. You know how Putin wanted to divide the people in the USA, and he did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it wasn't just that. Um, yeah, so the narrative around that, that thousands of Russian linked social media accounts were spreading misinformation about the COVID pandemic. No, it wasn't just they, that Russian linked accounts were spreading misinformation. It's not that simple. Thousands of Russian linked social media accounts have launched a coordinated effort to spread alarm about the new coronavirus disrupting global efforts. They did, it wasn't that they all just kind of on, came up with it at the same time. There was this kind of overlap in the ideas. It's word for fucking word while Trump was president. Here's another from Politico. State report, which we know as the GEC, Russian, Chinese, and Iranian disinformation narratives echo one another. Yeah, they're copy and paste schemes. This was about the U.S. having bioweapons um, and looking into the U.S. having perhaps any research around COVID in bio labs that were abroad. Okay, no. Uh, we study coronaviruses because they're the most common illness on the planet. And if there's going to be a global pandemic, it's more than likely going to travel be via coronavirus, a specific because of the shape of the virus and how many connectors it has, it's it's easily transmittable versus something that has like three prongs on it that only attaches to every 16th person or has to live out its entire life like Ebola, for example, to kill the person before it spreads on to the next person. That report didn't age well. Yes, it did. How? Ch tell me. Tell me what part. The three governments are pushing a host of matching, matching, uh, sorry, matching messages that the novel coronavirus is an American bioweapon. So uh, dipshit here is saying that it was an American bioweapon. That is the only reason this would uh, not age well. That's, uh, yeah. Oh, and by the way, for the record, and we'll finish up with this because she's going to say the same shit over and over again. Let me, let me, this is redacted. This is that fucking... Uh, clap trap show that they, they do. The, her husband used to be on Fox a long time ago and then built a bunch of people out of a fake, re in a real estate scheme and a fake real estate scheme. And then when he was sued and, and charged, uh, he, they fled the country and they've been living in fucking, I don't know, South America someplace. Um, they do the show from down there. So fuck America is their whole, like that, that's their new moneymaker. That's their new scheme. Um, uh, for, for the record, if I may, <clears throat> If indeed this didn't age well, and uh, for the record, um, the, you know, the U.S. created a bioweapon, 
right? That's the premise of this whole fucking article. The U.S. that was a bioweapon that uh, Donald Trump allowed a U.S. bioweapon uh, to kill Amer a million Americans so he could have leverage in a trade deal. That's that would be if that's the case. He was in. He was engaged at that time with this. Uh, with you know, trying to do a China trade deal, right? With China money. He was trying to get some of that China money, right? And then, yeah, okay. So the other, of course, if it was a Chinese bioweapon, then Donald Trump was president during the worst bioweapon attack in American history, and and not only did he not do anything about it, he uh, he specifically gave he sold the largest order of beef, pork, corn, and soybeans uh, to our the people who sent it allegedly according to this dipshit. But it didn't age well. You know what's not going to age well? Uh, the two of them. I'm just saying. It's not, will Clayton speak? I don't think so. Clayton, like, popped in for a second. He will he probably gets the last word. She gets to do all the fucking... She, like, sh, uh, hold on. She gets to do... I want that in there. Um, yeah. So she gets to do all the kind of secretarial talk on it. And then he chimes in with wisdom. Also, the U.S. national debt. Uh, you're just going to run that for the, that's the idea that we can't afford to, to we got to close the border because we can't afford it. Um, and you, you want, how about put, here's a good idea. Put our economy, our GDP underneath that. Just our yearly GDP. Not our total debt over time, but our yearly GDP. How about do that? And, and the other thing is under under that put how much how much your car, your uh, your show makes and how much your bills are in Papua New Guinea or wherever the fuck you are compared to it. Let me see what the what the percentage of uh, debt to income ratio is on that one. Curious, wouldn't you think? 